Hi, I'm Riley, and I'm reading 1943 by Donald Hall. They toughened us for war. In the high school auditorium, Ed Monahan knocked out Dominic Esposito in the first round of the heavyweight finals, and ten months later, Dom died in the third wave at Tarawa. Every morning of the war, our Brockhold Dairy delivered milk from horse-drawn wagons to wooden back porches in southern Connecticut. In winter, frozen cream lifted the cardboard lids of glass bottles, grade A or grade B, while Marines bled to death in the surf. Or the right engine faltered into channel silt, the troops marched. What could we do with frostbitten feet as white as milk? So I am doing the Venler method to approach this poem, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper with the correct structure because my printer was not working. So... The meaning is the first step on the Venler method, and so I interpreted this poem to mean that life before and after World War II had a drastic effect on the lives of soldiers and their families, but mainly the soldiers is what is focused on in this poem because it compares and contrasts the innocence before the war and how it's lost during and after. And so the antecedent scenario is that the speaker was a high school student who was just living their normal life. And you can tell through the writing that it's more hopeful and casual and lackadaisical. And it's divided into five parts, which you can see here that I bracketed. And it breaks in the middle of sentences, which I think is important to show that life was kind of choppy through these times. And so... For me, I think that the climax is in the last stanza where it talks about the engines faltering and troops marching with frostbitten feet as white as milk. And the reason I think that this is the climax of the story is because white is usually a symbol of innocence. But here it's the exact opposite because with frostbitten feet as white as milk, it's showing how they've they've lugged on through the war and they're slowly realizing what life is actually like, and so they're losing that sense of innocence, which I think creates a good juxtaposition within the poem. And something else that I think is important is that the stanzas are broken up with indents as well as a line in between each new stanza, and so I think this is important because it shifts between the different types of flashbacks. For example, in the first half of the stanza, it's going back to high school, but in the second half, it changes to the war, and it goes back and forth and back and forth. And I think that's important because it shows a shift in also the way that they live their lives and how they see the world around them. And so I think that the pattern of the skeleton of the poem is important because it follows an ebb and flow pattern because this is more of a flow and then it turns into an ebb going back and forth because this is more of an up and that's a down in retrospect because this was not as big of a deal as that in the long run. And something that I think created much more meaning to the reader through language was the fact that names were used because it creates a personal connection with the audience and that affects the tone greatly and so that leads me to the tone which obviously shifts back and forth constantly like an a and b pattern as i said before between hopeful and hopeless and lastly i want to talk about the roads not taken the author or the speaker could have gone with a path of creating this kind of story and then adding a sixth stanza and ending with something that's more hopeful or more philosophical that kind of gives the reader a new perspective on life, which this poem still does, but it doesn't have a happy ending, which I think is a better method to take for this route because it creates a better sense of appreciation for the audience as well as a deeper meaning of what it was truly like.